So I'm just going to do a video of what I've learnt so far with the Manticore. Uh, looking at the 2D screen. Now, you've got your conductor line, lower limits and upper limits, ferrous limits. That is one of my uh, programs, uh, discrimination pattern, for benchmark tests, air test. I went in the field and this didn't work um, as you have the heel effect. So I had to strengthen it up a bit and I ended up with that. And it, this does work quite well. So big ball of iron. Tries coming down, tries dripping down. Big long piece of iron. Just try chipping down, but it's a iffy signal. A round piece of iron. It's all over the show. See it dripping down from the higher to the lower limits. He's trying to settle in the middle, but you're not going to dig that. You might dig that without the 2D screen. So the 2D screen does really help you out because you might think that's an iffy target. But looking at that, it looks like a thunderstorm going off. Uh, Roman nail. <clears throat> uh, we always do another big Roman bolt nail. That's a tricky one, but I want to keep them higher limits as high as possible. Let's turn the arse you off. Different iron. Turn it on. There you go. Uh, I've got one in here. It's a real square rectangular nail. Comes in the higher limits and a misshaped one. Now, what I want to, because I do air tests and I do ground tests, I've noticed something. I've noticed something with a 2D screen, which is you you don't get it in the air test, but you do get it in the ground, and it's all because of the halo effect. And because of this, you can tell how pure the metal is. So silver, gold, and obviously aluminium and stuff like that. You'll be able to tell what it is before you dig it. Uh, copper as well. Now, silver coin, a pure silver coin, that will hardly leach whatsoever. So this, in the ground, on the 2D screen, comes up really tight, a really tight circle. So does this in air. This comes up a really tight circle. This in air comes a tight circle. This um, copper in air, 1806, tight circle. Everything comes with a tight circle in air. You get it in ground, it changes. This is still a tight circle because it doesn't lead it into the ground that much. So is this. But when you start getting out of coppers, and bronzes, which leach into the ground quite a lot. The circle starts getting fluffy because it's picking up the halo effect. It's a bigger target. For example, this silver sixpence. Just show like that. Nice and tight, right near the conductor line. That alloy, uh, which is a copper and a bronze. When, when it's in the ground, it won't be as tight as that. But the silver will be near enough the same. This is without iron. This is without iron. Now, iron is the biggest leacher into the ground. Um, it is a mineral. It's actually a mineral. When you get mineralised ground, it can, it can be iron that's broken down over time. What you got to watch out for is... This nail and a silver coin. 
Now I've found, I've found that if the majority of the, the trace is out of the iron, which is quite uh, understandable, there will be something next to iron. But if the majority of the trace is in the iron, let's get that to something bigger. Silver and that. Well, that's just a bigger piece of iron. I probably wouldn't have dug that, you see. But that's just showing that the iron is bigger than the silver. Uh, I, it's all about 15 hours, 10, 15 hours in the field. A lot of stuff can get dragged down. I was on a dig and this in the ground... I mean, look at it there, but this in the ground was bang on. The same ID, but a perfect circle on a conductor line. Now, I don't know if it was to do with the mineralization, bringing it down, or some more iron in the ground, or just the moisture in the ground, but that come up a perfect audio, and it was near enough on the conductor line. But it wasn't, it wasn't draining like that. It wasn't waving all over like a big smudge. It was tight. It was tight like, like that. Which threw me, which it did throw me. And that must have been just to do with the ground, which I found out afterwards. Check it out yourself and give me some feedback because I haven't done much field, field testing uh, out in the field. I've done enough digging now to uh, make sure that, yeah, you can tell with this, uh, obviously, over time, 200 years old, the bronze and the coppers are looking bigger than the 200, 300 year old silver. I don't know what difference that's going to make because you're still going to take it anyway, aren't you? Now this, this is a cut half. Oh, it was a cut half. I just broke it. It's a cut quarter. <laughs> that's how thin it is. Comes up at 11, 12. If we get a small piece of iron, Put that aside of it. I don't mess around with settings too much and that there is better settings to get this kind of target. You see how it's trying to bring it in? That's the nail. It's getting dragged over because that's trying to drag it down there. If it's 2D it's, and it's multi-frequency, it should be able to show the trace of the iron and the coin as well. We'll get a sixpence. Which now comes up 70s. The iron's coming up 58. Upper limits. So it is. It's doing them both. That's the nail. Upright. And that's the kind. That way. So yeah. That's the little thing that I've noticed with the 2D. The 2D screen. You can't. You can't really go off it. It's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, I'm still learning it. So I'm going to be doing more tests. There's something that I'm going through. There's something that I'm going through with the ground balance uh, at the moment with the 2D screen. It's quite simple to follow. I've had to, with the upper and lower limits, to, you can get rid of big iron, but you'd have to really get that lower limits up to uh, the, con the conductor bar. Uh, it all depends. It all depends how hard you want to work uh, for it. And if you're on a site that's hardly got any iron, try and keep it as open as possible. And that's what I do. That first one that I use on benchmark tests, I, I try and use that. I try and use that as much as I can if there's hardly any iron. Because I'm not bothered about digging a bit of iron to open up a field. And that's probably the best way to do it. You only really have to try and tinkle with the upper and lower limits if you are in iron. That's what it's, that's what it's there for. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.